When a woman like Mrs. McGee, who is a good cook, marries into a family like the McGees, who are always hungry, they should have a revolving door on the guest room. The latest relative to be heard from is being discussed right now by Fibber McGee and Molly. I imagine seeing old cousin Salvador again after all these years, Molly. Yes, and him a famous artist. Must have been 15 years since he was here last. And if I remember correctly, he put away enough groceries at that time to last him 20. Mm -hmm. You know he's five years early? (laughs) That's it. Well, a guy as hungry as him was bound to be either a poet or a painter. I hope he brings me some of his pictures with him. I'd like to buy a couple just as an investment. (laughs) You mean like if you'd have bought a few Rembrandts 300 years ago, you'd make a neat profit on them today, old man? (laughs) Well, anyway, I hope Cousin Salvador remembers how interested I was in his career. I always said he'd make good someday with his painting, didn't I? Well, I don't remember you saying that, McGee, but I do know how you tried to help him along. Certainly. Every time he mentioned painting, you'd give him the brush. (laughs) Imagine our own cousin, a famous artist. I highly remember him, McGee. Did he look like an artist? What do you mean, did he look like an artist? Well, uh, did he wear his hair long? No. Only about 25 years, and then it all fell out. (laughs) I see. (laughs) Did his telegram see what time he'd arrive? No, but it'll probably be around dinner time. Now, let me see. I think the light will be better if I move this easel over by the window, don't you think? Why don't you wait and let Cousin uh, Salvador put it where he wants it? This is not for Cousin Salvador, my dear. I myself am indulging a bit in the creative urge. Salvador's telegram has aroused my artistic instinct. Oh, what have I done to deserve this? And the smock and beret. Oh, McGee. You know, baby, I got everything I need to become a famous modernistic artist. I'm practically colorblind, and I can't draw for sour apples. <laughs> you know, it's too bad Cousin Mervyn isn't coming, or you could paint some still life. Hmm? She had one of the biggest stills around Peoria. <laughs> I'm going to do impressionistic things, my dear. My first canvas, this one I'm working on now, will be entitled Retribution on Tuesday. <laughs> It will show a well-done hamburger draped over an alarm clock with a human torso in the background tattooed with soft-shelled crabs and a green heifer wearing a paper hat. (laughs) It will give an impression of the futility of life. (laughs) I'll bet it will at that. Hmm? Now look, uh, Van Dyke, if you get paint all over my living room rug... Come in. Oh, hello, Mr. Wimple. Hello, folks. Hi, Wimp. What's the umbrella for? Is it raining? Oh, no, Mr. McGee. No. I was just taking it downtown to get it repaired. Mm-hmm. I thought maybe I could get it fixed while I went to the doctor's. Oh, are you ill, Mr. Wimple? Oh, no, Mrs. McGee. <laughs> the umbrella and I are in the same condition. We each have two broken ribs. Your wife have something to do with this, Wimp? Well, yes, in a roundabout way, Mr. McGee. What do you mean, in a roundabout way? She chased me round about the house seven times before she got close enough to hit me with the umbrella. (laughs) Oh, my goodness, Mr. Wimple, you certainly lead a strenuous life. Don't you ever fight back? Oh, I did once, Mrs. McGee. My gosh, you did? What happened, Wimp? Well... (laughs) I'm a little ashamed of myself for losing my temper like that, Mr. McGee, but one day, Sweetie Face was particularly naughty to me, and I grabbed up a loaded shotgun. Heavenly days. I just stood there, and I said, Sweetie Face, I said, and I meant it, too. (laughs) Sweetie Face, I said, You take one step toward me, and I'll let you have it. Yes, yes. So she did. She took one step toward me, and I let her have it. I didn't want it anymore anyway. (laughs) You 
ought to get your wife to take up some quiet hobby, Mr. Wimple. Like me, Wimp. I just took up painting. I'm working on a modernistic job now called Sunrise Over Your Father's Mustache. <laughs> or Tapioca Pudding in B-flat. Oh, that's very interesting, Mr. McGee. But I'm more interested in poetry myself. Oh, have you written anything lately, Mr. Wimple? Yes, I have, Mrs. McGee. It's called Old Pretty Little Easter Egg. Well, let's hear it if you insist. All righty. Old Pretty Little Easter Egg, whose shell I crack so very gladly. You look at me from in my hand and make me feel so very sadly. Of all the folks on this great earth, the one I judge the very worst is the one who died you, little egg. Never thought to boil you first. <laughs> I think this one here is the best painting I've done in my whole career, Molly. And considering that your career just started about an hour ago and you've done seven, that's really something. Yeah. I sure wish it would get dark, though. Why? So we could see the northern lights. All artists have got to have a northern light to work by, you know. No, no, that's just a north light, dearie. It is? Well, I'm sure glad to hear that. Them northern lights flicker like anything. <laughs> What's the name of this current masterpiece you're working on? This? This I'm calling Two Railroad Tickets in Love with a Pile of Lint. <laughs> Notice how the blue tones modulate into this dirty gray color? <laughs> Don't it give you a far-off feeling of emancipation and stupidity? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. As a matter of fact... If that is one of the tradesmen, my dear, bid the fellow be off. Coil up your lasso, Picasso, and get down off your high horse. Okay. Come in. Oh, hello, Dr. Gamble. Hello, Molly. And what are you up to, underslung? What's that on your head, an ice bag? Oh, oh, oh. That, my dear doctor, is a beret. You will forgive me, I trust, if I pursue my artistic endeavors while you and my good woman indulge in the local gossip. One must take advantage of the fleeting light, you know. That's all. I can't take it this week. So long, Molly. But, Doctor, you... <laughs> now you see what you did, McGee? You and your fancy talk. Another few hours of this and you won't have a friend left in town. Is that right? You've got to be rude to people if you want to be noticed. Who ever heard of a polite genius? Well, for goodness sakes, you shouldn't... My curiosity got the better of me, friends. <laughs> is it true that little smudge spot here has gone in for painting? Yes, it is, Doctor. He's going to burst into the art world with a noise like threading a needle underwater. We have a house guest coming, Doctor. My cousin, Salvador McGee, the famous artist. You know of him, I suppose. Frankly, deep seat, I've never heard of him. <laughs> is he a blood relative or anemic like you? Well, according to his last letter, Doctor, his latest work is in the National Gallery in Washington. Take a look at some of my work, Doctor. All right. What's the name of this nauseating little item? I call this little thing Tempest in a Piggy Bank. Or Seven Razor Blades in Search of a Girl's Bicycle. Very interesting. Do you really think so, Doctor? Or are you just saying that because you haven't got your glasses on? You realize, of course, my dear doctor, that I'm not a mere painter of pictures. I paint emotionally. I depict the innermost thoughts of humanity, the primitive urges and the savagery of civilization. <laughs> you done a self-portrait yet, McGee? You really should do a self-portrait. I've always thought you should be done in oil. <laughs> Painted, Doctor? No, boiled. <laughs> well, for your information, you big sinus plumber. <laughs> There's an artistic strain that runs clear through the McGee family. Oh, and what a strain it is, too. <laughs> I don't expect any appreciation from an illiterate old oaf like you, Fatso, but believe me, I know talent. You not only do, you have. I have what? No talent. So long, Molly. <laughs> Thank you. 
I'm afraid the doctor has a low opinion of your efforts, McGee. Well, what'd you expect? You ever notice that corny picture he's got in his office? It's a cowboy on a ratty-looking old horse holding a rusty rifle. Why, darling, that is a genuine Remington. That rifle? No, the artist. You mean little Benny Remington that runs the shoe shine parlor down on Oak Street? Why, that guy couldn't paint. Come in. Well, for goodness sakes, Mrs. Carstairs and Mr. Wilcox. Oh, Glad you dropped in, friends. My friends are always welcome in my studio. Thank you. We can chat while I work. We uh, just met Doc Gamble, pal. He said you had a bad case of painter's colic, so we thought we'd drop in and see how you were. Oh, he was just being sarcastic, I guess, Mr. Wilcox. That is rather a strange bit of work you have in hand there, Mr. McGee. May I ask what you call it? I see you have a true eye for the better thing. This is a dream impression of unreality with tragic undertones of elementary depravity. And it doesn't hurt a bit. <laughs> I call it ragamuffins at high noon. <laughs> or passion plaything without board motor. <laughs> I say, Wilcox, old fellow, hand me that tube of paint there, will you? That's a good chat. Hey, this isn't paint. Toothpaste. I know, I know. I'm just starting a new canvas called Delirium with Miriam Zirium. <laughs> There's hope, there's life. <laughs> you know, Mr. McGee, this is all very reminiscent of the time I spent in Paris in 1933. I saw several paintings very similar to yours. Exhibition, was it, Madison? No. One afternoon in a painter's studio, some of the artists tried a little experiment. They backed a blindfolded mule up against an easel, tied a wet paintbrush to his tail, and let several horse flies out of a bottle. The picture won first prize that year. <laughs> there, McGee. And remember, that mule was blindfolded. Now, that's all very well, but where can I get a bottle of horse flies at this time? <laughs> hey, what are you doing, Junior? Pal, here's a painting that really appeals to me. Can I buy this? Oh, my gosh, Junior, you don't want that old thing. I Name just... a price, will you? I have a place on my living room wall where this will be perfect. Where are you living now, Mr. Wilcox? In the Fletcher Ward? <laughs> That one is pretty badly wrinkled, Mr. Wilcox. Why don't you select one? No, no, I want this one. I can just see it framed in a mahogany and gold frame. You know what I'll put on the frame? I think I can make a pretty uh, good... Johnson's wax, naturally. Anybody who appreciates good things wants to see them get the best possible protection against dust and dirt and dampness. Yeah, but that one you Where is Johnson's Wax is the standard household protector for picture frames, woodwork, floors, furniture, enamel surfaces, and leather goods. Yeah, but what that Because it seals surface floors against penetration of dust and dampness. Yeah, but that thing you... And gives a sparkle to your home. A sparkle that's like hospitality spelled out in rhinestones. How much, pal? Name your price. Shall I leave while you gentlemen haggle? Oh, no, don't go, Millicent. This is McGee's first sale, and he promised me whatever he got for it. Gee whiz, Waxy, I don't want to see you do that. That's oh, come on, come on. $25. No, I... 40 50 75 Junior, I'm going to keep this friendly. I want you to have that painting, and for you, it's just five bucks. Oh, no, I couldn't take it back. Five it's bucks or no sale, Buster. Okay, here you are, and thanks ever so much. I want you to see it after I have it framed. By the way, what's the name of it? Oh, I, I call that uh, splitting an atom at Eve. <laughs> Take good care of it. Oh, I will, believe me. Can I uh, drop you off at home, Mrs. Carstairs? Oh, please do, Mr. Wilcox. I must get back and write Boris Karloff a letter. Goodness sakes, Boris Karloff. Is he a friend of yours, Millicent? No, I merely want to say, so you think you make horror pictures. Good day, my dear, and Mr. McGee. Good Good day, friend. I can't understand you, dear. You had a chance to get $100 for that painting. That rat at that wasn't a painting. That was the rag I've been wiping my brushes on. Hey, where are you going, Molly? I'm going upstairs and get the guest room ready for Cousin Salvador. Oh, fine. Don't make any more mess than you will anyway. Okay. Ah, there goes a good kid. I ain't fooling her any with this long-haired stuff. 
She knows I'm just a Grant Wood with knot holes. But does she care? No, sir. She's... Come in. Hi, mister. Oh, hi, Teeny. Hi. See, <laughs> what you doing in the apron and camera center, mister? What you doing, hmm? Well, this is a smock and a beret, sis, and I'm painting pictures. Like this one here, you see. What do you think of it, sis? Will you tell me a story, Mr. Mm-hmm. Hmm, please, will you, hmm, please? You didn't answer my question, Teeny. Well, my mommy says if you can't say something nice about people, don't say anything, mister. I, uh... <laughs> well, so you want a story, eh? Yeah, please. Okay, I ever tell you about Katie the kangaroo? Oh, <laughs> no. Okay. Once upon a time... Gee, I like stories that start out like that, mister. All the Mother Geese stories do. Mother Goose, sis. There's more than one of them, mister. Hmm? Goose is singular. Geese is plurity. <laughs> okay, let it go. Well, sir, once upon a time, way down in Australia, there lived a little kangaroo named Katie. Oh. And for years and years, she was, till she was big enough to hop around by herself, she traveled in her mama's vest pocket. Oh. <laughs> And one day, as she was sitting there on her front pouch, Porch. Pouch. Oh. Her mama said to her, Katie, she says, tomorrow you go to school. Oh, boy, kindergarten, huh? Yep. So Katie went to kindergarten, grade school, and high school. On her last year of school, she was made chairman of the senior hop. Oh. On account of she could hop farther than any other student, see? <laughs> Thanks to Katie, it was the greatest senior hop they'd ever had. And they were all trying to leap around as high and as fast as she did. And everybody had a wonderful time. Jump, leap, hop, spring, leap, jump, hop. <laughs> and that's how love came to Katie. See how, mister? Well, sir, her boyfriend, Curtis Kangaroo, who had just been chosen as the boy most likely to be chosen as the boy most likely not to get any place, <laughs> says, what are you looking at me like that for, Katie? And Katie says, I love you, Curtis. Let's get married. Okay, says Kurt, so they did. And all because that senior hop had reminded Katie of something. And you know what that was? Sure I do, I bet you. What? It was leap year. Oh, sure. <laughs> Thanks anyway, mister. So long. <laughs> A little more tattletale gray in the background. Dash of taxicab yellow. That's here. quite a painting you're working on there, McGee. Oh, this is the best one yet. It's a fantasy of social insecurity as the forces of nature meet the challenge of television. Hmm. What's the significance of the mustache cup in the lower left there? This? That ain't a mustache cup. That's an allegorical figure. That's Nincompoopia, the goddess of heavyweight wrestling. <laughs> Dear, I'm afraid I'll just never understand modernistic painting. Mm-hmm. Anytime anybody does, all us artists will be looking for work. <laughs> now, let me see. Come in. Oh, hello, Mayor Latrivia. Well, how do you do, Molly? Hello there, McGee. Oh, pardon me, madam. I thought you were Mr. McGee. Don't let the smock on the beret fool you, Latrivia. I just wear these to keep the paint out of my eyes, clothes, and hair. With little or no success, you might add. Well, I didn't know you were an artist, McGee. Is... Is this some of your work? Yes, it is, Mr. Mayor. You like it? No. <laughs> well, that's because you don't understand modern art, Your Honor. And if you'll move over, I'll join you. <laughs> You're accustomed to old-fashioned art, Latrivia. Sunsets and stuff, kitchen calendars, three kittens in a basket, <laughs> photographic. You've got to learn to appreciate modern painting emotionally. Uh, what brought on this burst of self-expression, McGee? Well, his cousin Salvador McGee is coming today for a visit, Your Honor. He's a well-known painter back east. Made a lot of money at it, too. Anytime you want him and me to do any mural painting at the city hall, the trip, just speak up. You mean mural painting, McGee. What did I say? You said mural. That's a girl's name. Why should you want us to paint her on the wall at the city hall? <laughs> Who is she, anyway? Who is who? Muriel, the girl you want McGee to paint on the wall. I don't want anything of the kind. I didn't suggest any such thing. Oh, don't be so cagey, boy. We won't hold you up. Wait till you see a rough sketch before you say yes or no. You got a snapshot of her with you? Now, look, McGee. Is she a blonde or brunette, Your Honor? The reason she asked is I paint brunettes cheaper. (laughs) Mixing the color for a blonde or a redhead. I tell you, she is not a blonde head. A wall type. This whole thing is your idea. 
I don't even know anybody named Muriel, except an elderly aunt of mine. Is that clear? Personally, I think it's mighty sweet of you to want your aunt's portrait in the city hall. <laughs> the way I'll do it in the trip is this. I'll make a preliminary sketch, you see. Then we'll find out where in the city hall would be the best place to hang Muriel. I tell you, I don't want any Muriel. A moral. If my aunt was... Look, any time the city aunt, a mural hall, I mean a superior, paint a mill... You said that I wanted a Muriel. A picture pointed. Pointed. Pitch. Pitch. I... You were the... It was... McGee? <laughs> yes? Tell me, how do you mix your paint? That's an interesting question. Depends on whether you mix it wet or dry, Lafayette. If you mix it dry, you take a powder... I certainly do. Good day. <laughs> I sure wish he'd shown me that snapshot of Muriel before he left. I'd have painted her picture and give it to him for Christmas. Ah, uh, he's just shy, I guess. Yeah. And if she's his aunt, what... what's the matter? You see anything in my palette? You mean my breadboard that you were mixing all that paint on? You laid it on a chair when the mayor came in. Which chair? The one you're sitting in, I think. That's what I think. <laughs> well, aren't you going to get up? There's no hurry now. I can't get any more paint. Come in. I too, uh, is this McGee's residence? Cousin Salvador. Hi, boy. Come on in. Oh, my goodness. It's good to see you again, Cousin Salvador. Well, uh, hey. Well, gee, uh, who's doing all the painting? Me, Salvi. How do you like them? Well, don't ask me, Cousin Fibber. I wouldn't know. Oh, oh go on with you. <laughs> and you with all your paintings at the National Gallery in Washington that you wrote us about. Well, uh, not my painting, Molly. My painting. Oh, just just one, you mean? Yep. Yeah. But it's the biggest job I ever did. Yeah. I did the whole interior in white, two coats of white enamel, trimmed all the windows in moss green. Why, next month I got another job doing a brewery, and they told me... Oh, this is... <laughs> McGee, uh, Cousin Salvador wants to know if we want any painting done around here. No. <laughs> he says he'll do a wonderful job. He says when he gets through with a house, you wouldn't recognize it. Yeah, I know. He proved that at dinner with the poison.